All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back at it again, bringing you another video coming to you all the way in the middle of the woods inside a cabin. So I'm in the middle of the woods, just chilling out for a week and thought I'd make you this quick video. In fact, I made a tweet on my Twitter talking about quick post your trade review from a trade that you took and I will make a video. All my trades or all my videos regarding trade reviews are trades that I take. So you know what? I've been getting a lot of questions this past week asking, hey, is this a good trade or what, what should I consider a good trade versus a bad trade? Um, so I offered my opinion. So I asked you guys to feel free to send me a picture of your guys' trade and I will review it and I'll just give you my opinion. Remember, this is just my opinion on my style of how I trade. Does this mean that you should go off and exactly replicate it? No, you should continue trading however you're trading unless you're not finding good results, right? So let's have a look what people sent me. I'm going to start with Sebastian. Sebastian, you've been messaging me a lot in the private messages, um, so I have no problem looking at yours. Let's get right into it. Now, I have the sun coming in right behind me, so I can like see myself and the windows all behind me, so it's going to be kind of hard for me to see the charts. In fact, there's a lot of wildfire smoke out there right now. Um, due to the wildfires coming up from Oregon, California, and Washington. So it's just like flooded with um, wildfire smoke. You can't even see the sky. Uh, you can't even see the mountains. <laughs> so I'm just getting a massive reflection. So hopefully I can do this correctly. Um, so it looks like you took a trade on pound yen. Multiple time frame analysis. So let's get started. Uh, price is near 4-hour demand zone, 4-hour trend equals downtrend, looking for buying opportunities. Okay, I like how you worded this because if you're using multiple time frame analysis, that's what I also talk about in my little free little master course. It's actually a whole section. In fact, I got a, uh, we just reached 1,000 members on our free little master course. So feel free to check that out. It's actually, we talk about here, lesson two, multiple time frame analysis and trends. So what he said here was price is near four hour demand zone, four hour trend equals down. He's looking for buying opportunities. Okay, that tells me what his thought process is on the higher time frame. Uh, it looks like he has higher time frame demand down in here in this orange box. Next is uh, confirmation. I believe I talked about this. I do in, as well inside the free little master course. So feel free to check that out. I'll try to talk about it more later. Confirmation, 20-minute momentum line break, 20-minute drop base drop removed. Look for setups into a lower time frame. Okay, I understand you were trying to wait for, um, you're waiting for price to show you evidence of buyers starting to step in and sellers weakening. It looks like you're referring to uh, momentum line being broken or trend lines being broken and opposing supply zones being removed, which you have here. I agree. Now you went down to your entry time frame, which was, I'm not too sure, but down here, drop base rally, you bought the pullback down into here, and it looked like it was a pretty good winner. First take profit at 2.5 to 1, and a take profit of 4 to 1. So what do I think about this trade? Um, let's start with the cons. Um, one, you're not buying inside a higher time frame demand zone. Usually I always talk about how I always like to be buying inside higher time frame supply and demand zones. In fact, 95% of my trades are always traded inside my higher time frame supplier demand zone. So it would have been nice if prices could actually go down into this area of demand. Okay. As for your lower time frame, I really like the evidence of price starting to turn. It looks like, as you said, momentum lines being broken, opposing zones being removed. And then what I like what you did here is you bought the drop base rally at the extreme on your lower time frame right price typically turns from inside out meaning from smaller time frame to larger time frame so here was your one minute i'm not too sure what this is 10 minute 15 minute drop base rally that you bought back into and i like that another thing what i like is the strength of the leg out right very strong leg out which is right here it's nice because you didn't have a grinding action like say this right here if you had to take this chunk and then put it as the leg out, I wouldn't want to be buying this. We want to be imbalanced traders. We want to be trading these big imbalances, right? This is going to let us know if there's a lot of buyers or sellers in this given area. And we're going to see that by the strength of the leg out. Same thing with supply, even this right here. Very strong leg out, right? 
there's probably a lot of sellers still in this area and you can even see how prices came up once down tested it twice went deeper into it down tested it three times and then came back down okay so prices came back down and you bought it I like that um, so overall or what else oh, one more thing I wanted to touch on was I even talked about this in my group as well try to stick to the regular time frames not a 20 minute time frame the common time frames out there for most you know big money out there is what one minute five minute 15 minutes 30 minutes one hour four hour daily weekly monthly uh, you will never see me trading 20 minute time frames or 18 minute time frames or 45 minute time frames right it's pretty standard around the trading industry of trading one minute five minutes 15 minutes hourly charts right daily four hour weekly charts monthly charts not these odd little time frames like a 20 minute I consider that odd okay so I don't like that using that 20 minute it looks like you use the 10 minute as your entry I'm not a big fan of that maybe the 15 minute or the five minute um, but that's just a minor thing I would add a couple notes on okay besides that looks like it was a winning trade so if it was a good trade in your books good for you thank you Sebastian next let's talk about ooh, I don't even know how to pronounce your name bro Bab Lili? Oh, dude, I don't know. Uh, USD CAD, four hour. Okay. Okay. I see. I hate when people send me charts like this. I hate it when people send me pictures of like an analysis and they say, should I buy or should I sell or what's my thoughts? And they don't really put any effort in behind it of drawing up a proper top down analysis or, you know, writing notes. They just kind of just post a chart with like one zone marked out. And they say buy, sell, opinion, right? Uh, I don't see a top-down analysis on this. Like, this is your four-hour time frame. I don't like this drop base rally because it didn't remove anything. It didn't continue the trend up. I would rather be a buyer down in here. I'm not sure if you bought in here either. It's like, it's like I have no idea where you bought and sold. I see buy orders being placed up here. I see... I don't know, is this buy orders as well down in here? I like this area where you bought because you're buying the pullback down into an area of demand with the trend being up. But I don't like this zone right here because this drop base rally never actually really accomplished anything. It would have been nice if prices could have removed this area of supply and or um, pushed up higher so we could draw the momentum line. Right, but this alone, I don't like it. Um, it better rise up, like Jesus. Um, well, try not to have that attitude, as in like this thing can either go up or down. Right? Don't put any hope into this. Don't freak out if it loses. I have no idea. We can quickly see. USD CAD, four-hour time frame. Yeah. See, I would rather be a buyer down in these areas. Right down there, we talked about this in the group, um, but I wouldn't want to be a buyer here. I just don't see a very strong imbalance. Compare it to, when I say the imbalance, I'm referring to this. Oops, notice this right here, this drop base rally, right? Very strong leg out, right? This, I really just don't see a strong leg out. Where is this? It's just kind of going like sideways, leg out, pull back. It didn't really tell me that there's a lot of buyers coming in. And this wick, I'm guessing if you go down into a lower time frame, like right here, notice how this leg out right here goes below. Like watch. Notice how this leg out shoots all the way down here. That's telling me that sellers took this price all the way down before taking off. So in my opinion, we might see like a one hour or a 30 minute drop base rally down there. Okay, and there's the 30 minute, or there's the one hour, right? I'm sure you could tighten it up just a bit more. 30 minute, that's what I mean. That's where I, my opinion is where the imbalance actually started from, okay? Uh, as for your top down trade review or analysis, uh, it's kind of hard when you just supply me with one picture with no text, right? Because then I'm trying to figure out what you're thinking. Next. 
Fenko. Um, same thing. It's like lines with arrows and pointing upwards. Like I don't know what your whole top-down analysis is. When I see something like this, I just assume people are buying and selling straight up these supply and demand zones. Um, if you're drawing your whole zone like this, this orange box, I would tighten it up into here. So I move this rectangle box down a bit to where the prices started the imbalance because the imbalance really started from down in here and then took off. So I would tighten this up just a bit. Okay. Same with this one. In fact, I would include the top of this wick here. Okay. And not just cut through the middle of the base. Uh, yeah. I don't know. There's not much I can you know talk about this when I don't get supplied with multiple time frame analysis or um, comments. Right. I think that's everything. So I'll try to show you what I mean. I think I have one of my trades right here. So this was a DAX futures trade. I Did I take this? No, I don't think I took this one. I was showing this as an example um, to the group why I didn't take it, but we're not going to talk about that. I'm just going to show you multiple time frame analysis showing my zones, why I'm buying, why I'm selling. Okay. So here is the DAX futures four hour time frame rally base drop. Notice the strong drop, right? Very strong drop. Look how far prices moved before prices finally returned. This is telling me that there is a significant amount of sellers in this area. If we understand this is billions and billions of dollars trading inside this market, right, every day. This is not retail trading making this big imbalance. Okay, this is big money. So when prices come back up into this area of supply, I see this as value. Okay, so prices come back up. I'm assuming they're not going to continue buying in this area after prices have just shot up all the way from down here. All right, why would they want to continue to buy? That's kind of my thought process. Is With that said, does that mean prices couldn't shoot straight up? No, it very well could. That's why not every supply and demand zone works, but that's why we apply a set of rules to help us determine a good trade versus a bad trade or one probability happening over another, right? Um, it's all it's all probabilities. That's all trading is, right? Um, so here we have price inside supply. What did I say? Four hour trend equals uptrend. That's telling me okay, we're in an uptrend, so I'm taking a counter trend position. So maybe I want to get out early. Um, price reacting off a of four hour rally based drop supply zone. So any shorts will be counter trend. Right here I said it, and right here I said it. Okay. So I agree, four hour uptrend prices coming back up into supply. We can look for selling opportunities, but we need to be aware of um, we are counter trend. So then what I did was I went down to my entry time frame, in this case the 15 minute, and then the higher time, ways, time frame was the four hour. We start to see, if you go through the free little mini course that I offer, you start to understand how price turns from inside out, meaning the one minute changes before the five minute, the five minute changes before the one hour, the one hour changes before the uh, four hour and so on and so on. It's exactly like this. Um, if we had to say, take this zone that we talked about right here, this is the 30 minute time frame. We didn't get evidence of sellers coming in until really this area, okay? Until that area on the 30 minute time frame because that's when we started removing supply and breaking downward momentum. Now, if we go to the five minute time frame, we are probably going to have five minute evidence of buyers starting to step in before that. So let's go down into the five minute. Now, if I'm an, uh, if I'm doing my analysis on the five minute, I need to consider what's happening on the five minute time frame. So I redo my analysis, draw my trend lines. I start to see evidence of buyers losing momentum or buyers starting to step in, sorry. Sellers losing momentum, buyers starting to step in here. Okay, like we said, this was 30 minute evidence. This is five minute evidence. We go down to the one minute, we're probably going to get evidence from, I'm guessing, right here from my experience. If not, we're going to get it right here. Oops, right here. One of those two spots. Um, 
let's keep going. So one minute time frame. I would feel comfortable saying sellers were getting removed. Yeah, from down in here. This is when evidence of sellers started uh, losing momentum. Okay, from right there. Right, so price turns from inside out. Where am I? Uh, right here. Um, but notice the strength of the leg out, right? Very strong, very strong leg out. Distance move away, that's going to tell me, you know, uh, well, the strength of the leg out is going to tell me if there's a big imbalance in between buyers and sellers. That's what we want. Distance move away is going to tell me how long the buyers or sellers took control before reversing back up into the supplier demand zone. Um, you know, something to consider, maybe time spent. Do you really think, let me ask you this, if there really is a very strong imbalance in the market, do you think prices will go sideways for very long? Or do you think it will go for a short time and then take off or take down, take off or down, right? It's probably going to not spend too much time, right? So notice here, just one candle and then strong drop, okay? Notice the lot of buy, uh, sorry sellers coming in, right? Strong candles, open, high, low, close candles, close very strong, all right? The, the candlesticks are not like this, like that, right? They're like this. Okay, that's going to tell me if there's a lot of buyers or sellers are stepping in. Um, yeah, right. And then also considering multiple time frame analysis, right? So these are just little things that I use to determine, uh, you know, a higher probability trade versus a lower probability trade. Okay. Um, but also note here, I'll even show you guys an example of a good trade, uh, that one of the members took, I think last week. What I like about their trade reviews is when they post a trade review, I understand their whole top-down analysis. In fact, I get upset when people in my group don't post a chart like this because it forces me to go through exactly like um, Fenco and... Dude, I have no idea how to pronounce your name. What is it? Nathy? No idea. Okay, but... Um, <laughs> but when I see a chart like this, I'm just like, oh gosh, I don't know what the hell they're thinking. I don't know what their whole top-down analysis is. I don't know. But that's okay. You're not in a private group, so I'm not going to you know, harp on you. All right? But if you were in the private group and you did post a chart like this, I wouldn't even review it. I would probably send you a message or a comment down below saying, hey, this is how you do a trade review. Um, it makes my job a lot easier. When you have multiple time frame analysis, you can draw out these zones and tell me what your thought process is instead of me spending 15 minutes going through the Wednesday meeting, the trade review meeting we do with the group, and where we go through everybody's trades and we talk about, hey, I like what you did here, I like what you did here, I don't like what you did here, good trade, bad trade, try to do this in the future, try to stay away from this in the future. Uh, without having a proper top-down analysis picture of a trade review, I really can't help, right? Um, so notice what Manas does. He supplies me with all his information. Higher time frames, middle time frames, lower time frames. You know, it doesn't have to be three, four, five time frames. It could just be two time frames. Um, but he supplies me with everything I need to know. You know, what's the trend on the higher time frame? Are we sitting inside higher time frame zone? Is it a tradable zone? What's, where's the evidence of buyers or sellers coming in? Is a set and forget? Um, why did you buy? Why did you sell? Notice the strong leg out, distance move away, time spent, that kind of crap, right? They all include that kind of stuff. So it's easy for me to do, you know, do the trade review for three, five minutes uh, and then go to the next one, right? So trade reviews like this. And what was his face? Sebastian. Like this, I completely understand. Like we were able to go through this, you know, a lot in detail uh, because you supplied me with all the charts, your information, your top down thought process, right? That's what I like. Okay, and with that said, I will let you guys go. Thank you very much for watching this video. I appreciate it. Feel free to leave comments. Reach out to me anytime. If you guys want to sign up for that free little mini course, 
feel free to sign up for the free little mini course, right? It's all in supply and demand. It's about three hours long. Excellent information. I got lots of comments on YouTube today saying, damn, I can't believe you give this out for free. Uh, so much great quality information. Thank you so much. No problem. If you have any questions, you just email me, message me, and I have no problem answering it, right? Just make sure you supply me with the right information. Okay, I'm going to enjoy the rest of my week here in the cabin, chilling out, having a couple beers, watching some football. Um, yeah, just living life, man. All right. September's around. Summer's coming to an end. And that's that. All right. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.